Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. We only recently introduced the 1.3 update to SDR Uno and we've been completely overwhelmed by the positive response uh, that has been received uh, to the new features we included, uh, which were improvements to the AGC performance, the availability of an IQ output, and uh, primarily the scanning feature, which is uh, very unique uh, within the SDR universe. And uh, although for most people the install went very smoothly, there have been occasional instances where people who were using third-party software with SDR Uno were having a little bit of frustration getting everything to work correctly again after the upgrade. And uh, we hate to see people unnecessarily uninstalling and reinstalling software and generally getting frustrated. So we put together this uh, short video to highlight some of the uh, common problems that we've seen and how to resolve them. So first up, we're going to look at uh, OmniRig, and that's the uh, glue software that's used to enable you to sync SDR Uno with an external transceiver. Secondly, we're going to look at virtual COM ports, and again, they're typically used for syncing third-party software with SDR Uno, uh, for example, logging software or, or decoding software, where you want to have the frequency in sync uh, between that software and SDR Uno. Uh, thirdly, the use of virtual audio cables, and these are typically used for sending the output from SDR Uno into some third-party software for decoding. And then finally, a few words on uh, the location of memory banks. So without further ado... The first thing I want to look at is OmniRig. And OmniRig is essentially the glue software that's used between SDR Uno and an external rig to synchronize the two together. What we have here is a fresh install of SDR Uno v1.3 and in the uh, little window in the lower right corner we can see a Kenwood TS590 SG which is also connected to this computer. And uh, if we start up SDR Uno we see we're running at 3.5 megahertz and uh, the rig remains on 14 megahertz or so. The two are not synced together. Now one thing it's important to understand is when SDR Uno was reinstalled, it didn't do anything to affect your existing settings within OmniRig. And in most cases, all you need to do is simply use the Rig Sync button in RX Control, which assigns OmniRig to this VRX. And by checking that, we see that immediately the rigs are uh, synced together. So, for example, if I go to the 40 meter band, 7.15 in SDR Uno, and 7.15 showing on the Kenwood. And that's basically all it takes in most cases to regain synchronization with the rig, unless you've done something else like using a different COM port to connect the rig to your PC, or you've made some other changes in, uh, in uh, OmniRig. Now, to check if, if turning on Rig Sync alone does not work, the sequence for troubleshooting problems would be first to go to settings in the SDR Uno main window and then move across and find the O-Rig tab. And here you should see your rig type, status hopefully will be online and which VRX is using the rig. If you do not see your rig there online, then you may want to go and open up OmniRig itself and confirm the settings there, in particular that the COM port selected in OmniRig matches the COM port that is being used to connect the radio to your PC. Uh, the other settings to do with OmniRig are in the uh, RX control settings window. There is a tab labeled OmniRig and it basically just controls the sync settings and most people will use the default settings right here. So that's basically all it should take to get OmniRig up and running again with your rig after upgrading to SDR Uno version 1.3. The second thing I want to look at is the use of virtual COM ports. And these are typically used when you're using third-party software that you want to synchronize with SDR Uno. And uh, as an example of that, I'm going to be looking at uh, Ham Radio Deluxe because I happen to have that installed on this particular system. So we will open up Ham Radio Deluxe. And uh, unless you've got the settings done otherwise, uh, the first thing that comes up is to select a preset radio to connect with uh, SDR Uno. We, we hit connect and we see we get an error message, access is denied. And the reason for that is that um, what we need to do is set up the corresponding 
uh, virtual COM port in SDR Uno. We see here that uh, HRD is using COM5 and if we go over to Device Manager and then open up the COM ports we will see COM5 and COM6 we set up as a, a virtual COM port pair using COMOCOM. So since HRD is using COM5 we must use COM6 in SDR Uno. So we go to the, the RX control window, open up settings and go to the CAT tab in this case and we select the appropriate COM port which is COM6 enable and connect and we should be good to go and then what we can do is um, we can try again, we can, we can go to the preset in uh, HRD it will probably still fail, it usually does HRD likes to be the uh, the first program started when you're syncing everything up so I'm going to just temporarily close SDR Uno and then go into the preset tab in HRD again I'm going to try connecting and this time it says connecting but it's pausing it's waiting for something to connect to so I'll now open SDR Uno and since we have uh, already set up uh, COM6 as, as required to talk to HRD it seems to take a little while to do its handshaking initially but sure enough in the background here we see that uh, HRD has started up and is synced in frequency with both SDR Uno and the rig and we can verify that just by changing the frequency on the radio and we see everything tracks correctly so uh, in summary to restore virtual COM ports, first you must establish which virtual COM ports you were using and then using the CAT tab in RX control, match the COM device here and connect. And uh, all those previous linkages you had between third party software and SDR Uno can be easily restored. The third thing I wanted to look at was the use of virtual audio cables and these are used when you wish to make an, a connection from the output of SDR Uno and you want to feed that into external decoding software and again since we were using Ham Radio Deluxe I'm going to use that as an example here uh, it features uh, Digital Master 780 which is digital decoding software so we'll open that up and see what's going on with it Again, there may be a slight delay while it opens up for the first time here and uh, depending on what your software is the appearance may be somewhat differently but the thing I wanted to point out is DM780 is looking for VB audio virtual cable as its input source so to get this to sync up correctly with SDR Uno again what we need to do is again go back to the settings for RX control only this time we go to the out tab and under output device in this drop down we select the VB audio cable input VB audio and uh, we will just uh, start up SDR Uno uh, I don't know that we're seeing any signals here to, to play with it doesn't really matter too much all I need to do is uh, turn up the volume level and go back to DM780 and you can see now we have uh, the signal has been detected coming through to the decoder. So to establish a virtual audio cable connection between SDR Uno and your decoding software again the settings button in RX control and then in out it will appear in your output device column here because whatever you were using before whether it's a VB audio cable as I'm using here or whether it was VAC virtual audio cable uh, none of that was uh, altered when you installed SDR Uno you just need to remake those connections as you see fit for the way you're running your system. Just one thing I wanted to mention uh, before I close here. Um, if you are a user of the memory panel, in most cases your uh, stored memory banks will appear here when you started up SDR Uno 1.3. Um, but if like me you elected to put those memory banks in a different uh, location 
it may show up as blank. And just as a refresher, if you right click in the memory panel, you can select Banks folder, and then you can browse through here to find where you put it. Now mine, uh, Documents is the default location, but within Documents, just for housekeeping purposes, I created a new folder just for memory banks. And if I select that location, then suddenly all my memory banks are restored. So if you happen to have moved your memory banks to a different location, this is how you can get them back. And uh, don't worry, they've not been lost forever. So in summary, to get OmniRig working again is often just a case of clicking on the Rig Sync 1 button in the RX control window. For COM ports, go to the RX control window, click on the Settings button, and then select the CAT tab, and ensure the appropriate COM ports have been selected. For virtual audio connections, again, from the RX control Settings window, this time select the Out tab, and make sure the correct virtual audio device is selected from the drop-down. And finally, for memory banks, right-click in the memory panel and select the memory bank location. Now, one thing, unfortunately, I cannot help you for right now is preserving saved workspaces. But the good news is, in SDR Uno 1.3, we have moved from saving settings in the registry into a .ini file, and hopefully when future major revisions are made to the software, you will be able to preserve those workspace settings. I hope this has been beneficial. Thank you for listening. And as always, for more information, please visit our website at sdrplay.com. 73.